7.35 p.m. from Seabus Super Stadium in the Gold Coast. I'll throw it back to you. Talk me through this Titan squad. Yeah, look, uh, you got uh, Kinney at the fullback, uh, Cam Pereira, Brian Kelly, AJ Brimson, and Philip Sami as the back line. Kieran Foran, Tanner Boyd at the halves. Uh, Photo Waker, Chris Randall, Big Tino, the captain, Hass, the brother, uh, Bo, um, and Keenan to round out the pack. Sam Barrow is the star on the bench. Isaac Linu, Aaron Clark, Jamin make up the bench. Joe, Jojo, Jacob, Tom, and Joshua uh, to round out the reserves. Um, uh, a lot, a lot of uh, long and uh, hard to pronounce names there, but um, I, I'm 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 uh, really excited for this game uh, in particular uh, this weekend. Apart from my boys playing on Sunday, the Cowboys. Um, one, we're missing Jaden Campbell, so that's a big loss. You got AJ Brimson filling into the center role, which I think. Yeah, we were having this argument. Last year, does AJ play this 14 role? Does Jaden play this uh, 14 role? Um, who starts at fullback? And I think they've gone with the right decision of having Jaden at fullback and um, AJ to be more of a stronger center um, moving forward. I think he can do a job there. We know he can play a bit of no, a bit of nine, a bit of one, a bit of three, or a three four, and five and two. That, in respect of uh, either side of the park. So, or he could play that 14 role. Um, he'd be a great pickup for State of Origin time um, and moving forward for the uh, Gold Coast Titans. And I think this squad um, under Dez uh, as the head, new head coach for the Titans this season, um, I think they're going to be uh, uh, ripping and tearing uh, through the first half of the season. Yeah, I mean, like like you said, a big in is Daz, and from all accounts, the players are buying in, and he's going very, very hard on this squad, which is good to see. Again, my question's always going to fall with this team is how can that six and seven, how far can they go? Obviously, they've got the experience of foreign, but Tanner Boyd, although he has played numerous first-grade games, he is still quite young compared to other players that he does play against in the same position. But it'll be an interesting one to tell. Chris Randall wins that hooker position, but for me, it's at number 14. He's a premiership winner with the Roosters. Sam Verrills, same thing. Isaiah, Isaac Liu, another premiership winner. They've got players off the bench that can come on, they can change the game, and they can take that step forward. So under Des, it's probably the right leadership for a few young players, and let's hope he can get the best out of these players. But Baxter, let's talk about the team they are playing against. We've spoken about one new coach. Let's go back to Flanagan. He has come in. He has taken over this dragon side. A very dismal start with the Charity Shield. They got played off the park by arguably, I want to say about 20, 30% of reserves from the South Sydney side, but they did bounce back in the second week and rack up a few points there. So in the fullback position, you got Tyrell Sloan. You then got Zach Lomax and Ravalara on the wins with Moses Suley and Jack Bird in the centers. Number six, it's not the coach and uh, 5 8. It is his son. You do have Kyle Flanagan. He is partnering up with Ben Hunt in the halfback position. The props you've got Francis Molo and Blake Laurie. The hooker you've got Jacob Little. And the second row you have Tom Eisenhoof and Jaden Sewer. And packing the scrum all reliable when he isn't suspended or injured. You've got Jack DeBellin with the bench of Connor, not pronouncing your last name, Michael Molo, Viliami Fafida. And Raymond Mariner with Ben Murdoch, Masilla, Christian Tupalatu, Jesse Marsh, Ryan Couchman, and Matthew Fagay in the extended bench. So, two new coaches. Let me get your thoughts on Flanagan. Obviously, you didn't watch much of preseason, so you haven't seen how the Dragons are firing, if they have been performing. But talk to me about a coach. Is he the coach to move this club forward? Can he control this locker room? And can I guess he get the best out of his son like he has in the past? Yeah, look, I think <sighs> Flano is his, this is he's a coach that can be sort of the um, he's the Jose Mourinho of the football world in the NRL. He knows how to take a struggling side, a um, 
yeah, he can, he can make it. He can make a good team great. He can make great players amazing. Um, you, you only have to look back. Maybe was it twenty thirteen? Maybe twenty twelve? Around that era when he took over uh, the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks and he turned them into the juggernauts that they were once were um, before all all of the um, the shit hit the fan uh, that that uh, club, but. Um, another dirty merger club. Um, you know, it, it's a bit. Does it surprise you that Zach Mo, uh, Zach Lomax moves from center to winger for you, Tony? Um, I have some little stats for that um, reasoning why. Um, in this back line, I really, it, it's really weak to me. I'm uh, doesn't really show a lot of. Um, confidence moving forward but again as i just said um flanagan knows how to make good players great and i think zach lomax maybe a couple of years ago was this up-and-comer who could move heavens and earths and be in that new south wales squad but it just hasn't seemed to click for him yeah i mean hey he was a good player and um i think when he does explode he does show that potential um from all accounts, he wasn't too happy with the move into that position. But like you said, Flano sat him down. He showed him the stats and he said, statistically, you're better off when you play in this position. You offer more to the team when you do play in this position. So, I mean, let, let's guess, I guess, for if, you're not, if, if you don't hate the Dragons, let's, let's hope that it does play out. Um, Flanagan, again, he took his ban. He served his time. And let's hope that he can get back to coaching because arguably – He's one of the better coaches that wasn't at a team last year due to his suspension. But let's let's keep moving on. Uh, if you've got the stats, jump in, Baxter. If you've got the stats, so that was behind yeah, it. No, it was, no, no, it was basically what he said. He sat him down. He said out of the 32 uh, centers for last season, he ranked 22nd. And for an $800,000 center um, paid on potential, um, it's not it's not good. Um you just yeah you touched on it a little bit but as i look at their their pack their pack seems to have some punch about it some oomph, uh moving forward but um uh, yeah without with uh, a, fr- uh, a forward pack can't roll without um a captain standing, uh, leading the ship and is it will you see ben hunt move uh moving on early on in this uh in this season will he remain a dragon for the re- remainder of this season, become a free agent, come November 1. Um, he's free to talk. Um, I know the dogs were really interested in him before they got Drew Hudson. So I think his options are now limited um, playing in the NRL come 2025. Yeah, I mean, and if you look at, um, I guess, unless he's going to go up to Brisbane and play in that hooker position, both six and seven at Brisbane have been signed up long term, or well, not long term, but they do have their immediate future locked away with Ezra Mann and obviously Adam Reynolds. Um, talking about Ezra Mann, I hope he is doing a lot better. Um, we're not going to get into too much about that, but we hope that he can get back to his best football after everything that did happen. But back to talking about obviously Ben Hunt, we've spoken about. Daily Cherry Evans and Luke Brooks and the pressure being off Luke Brooks. Kyle Flanagan, and I'm the first to admit it at the Roosters, he was a scapegoat. He came in. It wasn't a successful season. We threw him under the bus and said it was his problem, his fault. He's coming to a dragon side where Ben Hunt's going to do majority of the work and he gets to play second fiddle. The same thing we saw Luke Brooks do in Vegas and he was a lot more relaxed. I guess, does that, I guess, Boost Flanagan in your eyes? Does it think he's going to go a little bit further? Do you think he's going to be able to play second fiddle and make a difference? Or is this just another small step and Daddy got you another club? No, I think it could be doing a world of good um, given that he isn't um, playing in the seven jumper. Um, I think playing in the seven jumper comes with a lot of uh, uh, responsibilities uh, with that. Um, it takes a lot. There's a lot of pr- uh, pressure and stress dealing with that uh, position as well, being the chief sort of playmaker 
for the squad, moving the, the whole squad up and down the park, side to side. So um, given that he's now moving in with an experienced half, like we, like you said, Brooksy to DCA at Manly, um, only time will tell. The, the only difference here is uh, Flanagan doesn't have that 10-year uh, first-grade experience up his sleeve. He doesn't have that... Um, uh, what 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 is this? Maybe fifth fifth year in the yeah, NRL, right. and what what? How many how many games roughly has he? I'm just gonna have a quickly look. And again, got it. Well, he's been, he's 25 years old. He's played what? He's played a total of 80 games. 80 games uh, uh, since 20, uh, 2018. So 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22. 24. So he's he's been in for seven years, really. But he's only played 70, uh, 80 games. Yeah, and again, a lot of those might have been trial matches too, or a few of them. Sorry, not a lot of. Well, oh, this is this is just going off uh, Wikipedia, and you know, nine for the Sharks, twenty yeah. for the Roosters, fifty for the Dogs, and one for St George. So yeah, it might include um, trial games as well. But you know, and, and like well, I said. Arguably, he was a scapegoat of the Roosters. Let's let's be completely honest. He came in after Cronk, and he was a scapegoat. Yeah, um, make it a, uh, make it a, as you will over there um, for that situation. But um, I I think he might be the next Luke, uh, Luke Brooks for the Dragons, where he can just sort of his best ability is to just let Ben organise, and he just does the 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 backroom staff sort of stuff on the field and gets people in the places ready for for Hunt to um, make the call on the fly, but. Um, yeah, I, I, I hope it's, uh, it's going to work out. Yeah, well, I mean, arguably, I think either way is, is set up to be an entertaining game from all accounts. Both coaches wanted to get their new teams off to a winning way. And um, obviously, like I said, Flanagan himself as a player would want to get off to a winning way for his dad. But Baxter, I will go first on this one. It, it's kind of a toss in the air. I'm going to side with the experienced coach. Um, I think that Des knows how to get a team uh, ready to go. They have been training well, so I'm going to go to Titans 1-12, to especially at home. I'm going to throw it across to you. What's your tip for this one? Yeah, look, I'm going Desi, and I'm going 1-12 to as well. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of 13 pluses this weekend. Well, we'll see what he does with the next game because there is a potential that the next game does become a 13-plus in favour of someone's hat, and you all know that my team's already played in Vegas, so we'll see which way Josh goes with that one. But Baxter, thanks for joining me, guys. Hit like, hit subscribe, and make sure you tune in for the Sunday game. Second game of Super Saturday. you got the Titans taking on the Dragons at 7.35 p.m. from Seabus Super Stadium in the Gold Coast. I'll throw it back to you. Talk me through this Titans squad. Yeah, look... Uh, you got uh, Kinney at the fullback, uh, Cam Pereira, Brian Kelly, AJ Brimson, and Philip Sami as the back line. Kieran Foran, Tanner Boyd at the halves. Uh, Photo Waker, Chris Randall, Big Tino, the captain, Hass, the brother, uh, Bo, um, and Keenan to round out the pack. Sam Barrow is the star on the bench. Isaac Linu, Aaron Clark, Jamin. Make up the bench, Joe, Jojo, Jacob, Tom, and Josiah uh, to round out the reserves. Um, uh, lot of, a lot of uh, long and uh, hard to pronounce names there, but um, I'm 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 uh, really excited for this game uh, in particular uh, this weekend. Apart from my boys playing on Sunday, the Cowboys. Um, one, we're missing Jaden Campbell, so. 